Hi everybody, we have an Australian Labradoodle puppy video for you today. This is going to be a litter update for these little Labradoodle puppies who are three weeks old. And in today's video, we're going to tell you a little bit about each of these Labradoodle puppies. We're going to tell you a bit about our Mama Labradoodle, Callie. And we're also going to talk to you about Coccidia and we're going to talk about weaning puppies and we're also going to talk about desensitization of puppies and then we're going to tell you how all of those things are all a part of understanding how your dog is talking to you. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Labradoodles and these are the medium Australian Labradoodle puppies from our Calico Quilt Litter. And if you just take a look at the puppies here, you will see how much these puppies have grown. These are beautiful, chunky monkeys. They're medium Australian Labradoodles. So compared to our other litter that we have right now, which is our Anue Anue litter of mini Labradoodle puppies, you'll see a big difference no pun intended and you will see some signs that these puppies are beginning to eat solid food you'll see pink collar girl has a little bit of food stuck on her back there so let's start off with the first topic I was mentioning to you which is coccidia so what's coccidia so coccidia is one of those annoying things that dogs can pick up and like pretty much everything that dogs pick up that are problematic for them and can make them sick, it is transferred by poop. So what happens is a dog goes through the poop, gets it on their paws, licks their paws and ingests the coccidia. Or what's happened here with these Labradoodle puppies is that the, what happened was Callie got some coccidia into her system then of course she pooped it out and then either the puppies were in the bum area and ingested it or Kelly was cleaning herself and then licked one of her puppies and that's how the puppies got it. So what does that mean for the puppies? It doesn't mean anything too serious. When you have an adult dog set, just like Callie here, coccidia is something that about 35 to 40 percent of them have uh, in their system at all times. It's completely innocuous if you're a normal healthy adult dog but similar to uh, a flu virus and how it impacts very young children and the elderly or someone who is ill or has a um, uh, compromised immune system coccidia will impact young puppies who do not yet have a mature and robust uh, immune system so you can see nobody's really suffering here. Nobody's weak or lethargic. <laughs> Look at Kelly's style. She's nursing all her puppies. She's doing the sit nurse now because they're so big and then she rests her head on the crate. <laughs> Talk about taking advantage of something. <laughs> what a funny girl you are, Kelly Welly. Anyways, the puppies are all fine. So how do we even know that coccidia was present? Well, we came in and we found that there were two splats of diarrhea poop on the pee pads. So no, we don't always see what's going on with the poop right away because Kelly's very fastidious and she picks all the poop up really quickly. But when there's a, a diarrhea that's really splatty and definitely a problem, mom can't lick it all off the pee pad, so that is how we're alerted to it. So we didn't know which puppy it was. So how do you deal with that? What do you do? Uh, well, what happens is the puppy who's impacted will not be gaining weight well. So we immediately go to, to weighing them throughout the day multiple times. And generally what you'll find is the puppy is what we call dumpy. And a dumpy puppy is one who's listless, is sleeping, not engaging with anything with the other puppies, and the big clue, not interested in the milk bar. So one of the puppies was showing us those signs. So we picked up the uh, poop sample that we had and we took the puppy and the poop sample into the vet 
had the poop sample analyzed and sure enough there was uh, quite a lot of coccidia in that sample. The puppy also had mm, not a temperature but really flirting with that uh, level of warmth where we're not comfortable. So the puppy's temperature was uh, one puppy, I took two puppies in, one puppy was 38 and a half and one puppy was 39. So we allow puppies to have a slightly higher temperature than adults because they are typically warmer, they're clustered like this and of course we have them in an artificially warm environment in that we still have the heat on in the doodle den for them here uh, and we want to be sure that they are warm all the time so of course we have to make allowances for that but even with those allowances uh, we felt that that was a little high and a sign that the puppy was probably in some distress so there's a easy way to cure coccidia and uh, the product that you use for it is designed more for adults. Now normally adults, as I said, if they have coccidia, you don't even know. But if there's a really stressful situation or something triggers it, uh, then an adult can have a situation where you do need to deal with it. And that product is actually designed for cattle. And when I had my cattle ranch, I used to use it for my cattle quite often. With puppies, however, there is a, a small but still a present risk of dry eye. And if that happens to impact them from using this product, that dry eye will be there for the rest of their lives. And dry eye can result in a loss of the eye or loss of vision. Uh, so that's not a risk we want to take with our puppies. So instead, our vet and I together, we uh, always choose to use a different product which isn't on label for coccidia, uh, primarily is used more for Girardia, but it doesn't have any side effects for the puppies. It's completely safe for them. It's very innocuous for them. Um, and if you look, Reynold, can you get that camera down there? You'll see now that uh, Pink Collar Girl wasn't quite uh, pleased with the amount of milk she got at the milk bar, so she's found her way all the ways back over there to Cali uh, to get herself a little bit of a bonus in there. She's digging away. She mu must feel that she needs some more. And so Kelly's going, oh yeah, it's fine. Kelly's not refusing anybody any food yet. Uh, so the product that we use, as I said, is completely harmless to the puppies and much safer for the, puppy, for the puppies. Now the reason why not very many vets prescribe this product for coccidia and puppies is because it, the uh, drug is actually fatal to humans. If you get even the tiniest bit splashed on your tongue or you get, if you have it on your hand and you put your hand in your mouth and you get it on your tongue and ingest it, it will kill you. So it's very important that you use it with great caution. So this is one of the things when I talk to you about finding a vet that you can have a great relationship with. This is the type of situation where these things really matter. My vet and I enjoy an extremely close relationship. Uh, we trust one another implicitly. We've known each other for many, many years now, and he's comfortable prescribing that item for me, knowing full well that he doesn't have to worry that I'm going to kill myself by not paying attention, or that I'm going to have that treatment available for any staff or anyone else in the household. It's just me and only me that deals with that product. So the puppies have, uh, the two puppies who had the diarrhea have had uh, the medicine since Friday. Today is Sunday. Uh, this evening will be their last dose of it. You can give it for up to a week, uh, but the puppies have all recovered. They bounce back very quickly. It was not anything serious and everyone is gaining weight again. So that's perfect. So that brings us to our next topic, which is moving to some solid food. Uh, do we have a pan of food around? I want to show you their food in case you don't follow us on Facebook and haven't seen them eating their soft food. I will show it to you and uh, Callie will probably be the one who wants to eat it. So I may get Reynolds to take Callie out of the picture for just a minute if we can persuade her to go out. Where you go, Callie? Go on. Now she says, I want to see what that is. That's a good girl. Thank you, Kelly. So this mixture here is goat's milk and um, some raw uh, Stella and Chewy's frozen food and some pumpkin. 
So we just put it in this pan here. We use this type of pan as it helps to keep the food towards uh, the edge, making it easier for the puppies. And we just have it out here whenever Callie's not with them. And we just, all we do is show it to the puppies. Now these puppies at three weeks old, this is very early for eating solid food. Normally this doesn't happen until week four. However, these puppies were showing us and telling us, hey, we're kind of hungry. Uh, just like you saw a pink collar girl going back there to Kelly's milk bar looking for more food. And what we were observing as well is that when the puppies did go back to the milk bar for more food, oftentimes the various faucets were empty. So they had drained Kelly of all of her supplies. So that's not satisfying for the puppies and it also can be stressful for mom. Uh, although she's not um, cognitively aware of the fact that she's not providing nutrition for her children, uh, she is aware that something is not going quite right. So we don't want anybody to be stressed and of course we don't want them to be hungry. So we bring the food out and there you go. This is how <laughs> we start learning how to eat food. We stand in it and then we go, oh no, I am in so much trouble. Help, help. <laughs> and then what happens is they lick it off their feet or one another's feet and they learn like, oh, it's this stuff in the pan. So you can see Tan Collar Girl who just walked through it. Now she's trying to chew on the edge of the pan. This is all really normal behavior. It takes them a little while to figure out that the food is actually down there. And lapping it up is a learned uh, behavior for dogs. So they have to figure out how to get it in their mouths. And of course, the texture of this is entirely different from nursing. The whole process is different. And you can see this puppy here, who are you? This is yellow collar, has decided it's far too exhausting to even attempt. So just going to use the pan as a pillow. So we'll just get yellow out of the way so he doesn't get uh, all covered in the food. So you can see a lot of the food ends up on the pee pad here. There's quite a bit of waste that goes on at this stage. But remarkably, probably in four days, this will not happen. They'll be eating this. So I suspect that these puppies are going to be pretty much fully weaned by the time they're about five, five and a half weeks old. Um, Anissa's puppies are five weeks old uh, now. They're two weeks older than Callie's and uh, they are pretty much weaned. They still all love going to the milk bar because being at mom's milk bar, bar is not just about nutrition. It's also all about that comfort, that wonderful feeling of being cuddled up with your mom, the place that you've known since birth as being where you get fed, where you get comfort. And mom's there and she's licking you and everyone's cuddled together. And it's just like humans when we get together around a fireplace or under a cozy blanket and we all get together. It's like a great big hug from mom. So that is the puppies and what they're doing with their feeding. Now the other thing that's happening now that they're in the doodle den, because this is their big move out of the whelping area, out of the maternity ward into the doodle den. So what happens in the doodle den? Well, what happens here is desensitization begins. So you can see they have quite a large area. They have a crate. At the moment, the door to the crate is closed uh, because when we did our last video, they were all going in the crate and it was hard for me to get them out. So when they're in this new environment, they also are exposed to all sorts of different sounds. They see all of us back and forth more often. And by by all of us that's uh, right now. It's Taylor, myself, Reynolds, and we do have family that live nearby. So they come, they go through and into the doodle den. They come in and see the puppies. They're not handling the puppies. They don't wear their shoes. They don't wear any outer clothing to protect the puppies from any possible disease transmission. You can see from them getting the coccidia how easy that was for them to get it. And we'll talk about how that's not going to happen again shortly. But they come and they go through and they make a racket. Uh, Taylor brings her young niece, Peyton, here. If Peyton has a friend, uh, the friend will come. Our grandchildren come in here. And I can tell you when our grandchildren are here, 
it's a lot of noise. We have four in one family. Uh, those are the ones who live near us and they range from 16 to just about eight. And uh, when they're here, they uh, make quite a bit of noise because it's three boys and, and they're loud kids. So they, it's all great for the puppies. And so when these things are happening, we observe the puppies and we always have Callie with them. And we're gonna switch out the pan of food in a minute, I think for Callie or we'll just see how much more anybody wants to eat. Uh, but we observe what's happening. If the puppies are at all unhappy or concerned, if they're cowering, hiding, shivering, then we remove whatever is the trigger for that. And then we start again farther away, less of whatever it is, so that all these experiences are positive. Now this is the main thing behind all desensitization and socialization. If you've read somewhere about 100 people, 100 experiences in 100 days, wipe that from your mind. All you need is five as long as they're positive. If you can do 100 and they're all positive, super duper. But it's not necessary to always be trying to think of, oh, my puppy hasn't seen an ostrich. I better go find an ostrich. No, 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 no. Just simple, basic, everyday things, but done in a positive manner. Now, the other thing you need to remember, these are dogs. We are having these dogs join our world. It's entirely foreign to them. They are not living anything like they would be if they were living in dog world. They would not have a bed like this. They would not have pee pads. They would not get mush to eat. None of these things would happen. So when we um, hear people saying, oh, I took my dog to my uh, child's birthday party and the dog was afraid and didn't want to stay. Okay, that doesn't mean your dog's not been well socialized. That doesn't mean your dog's not well bred. That doesn't mean your dog has something wrong with them. That means your dog's acting like a dog and saying, you know what, I really don't like this. Dogs naturally live in a small group, what, they call, what we call a pack, and they don't interact with other packs. They don't go out for dinner together. They don't have people over for drinks. They don't meet up for lunch. They don't go shopping together. They stay in their own group, and if there's another group, they're considered to be hostile. Other groups interact to fight for territory, to fight for a stud, to fight for um, the alpha female for breeding purposes. They don't get together to have fun and, and have a chat. Uh, so when we ask our puppies to be out and living as we do, because we do uh, interact with other people and enjoy all those social activities, we're asking our dogs to do something that's entirely foreign to them. So you want to have them doing these things in little small bits that they enjoy. Now, my dog Ripple, she just loves if you go to a big event with lots of people because she wants attention. She is an attention hound. She just loves everybody and everything as long as they pay attention to her. Whereas our other dog Spirit, she dislikes those situations intensely. Spirit has a very strong feeling of responsibility to keep everyone and all of the dogs safe. So when she sees a large group of people, she's immediately worried that something is going to happen and she gets like, oh, I cannot keep my eye on everybody. So recognize that your dog has a personality and recognize when you are asking them to do some th things, first of all, they're not going to like it perhaps, and second of all, it's just not a natural experience. So if somebody comes up to you and says, oh, your dog's shy, oh, your dog's timid, Oh, your dog's aggressive. Oh, your dog's not properly socialized. Mm -mm. These are things that are completely said out of ignorance. You have to look at it in context and you have to understand your dog. So in closing, what I want to do is talk about everything we talked about here today. When the puppies had coccidia, oh, we have a little puppy here who's quite full and needing to air out his tummy. <laughs> I think this is a relaxed puppy. When you have, how we knew that there was coccidia is by observation. Know your dog. This is the most important thing I can stress to everyone. You need to know your dog. 
you need to know if something is different in your dog's behavior. We spend hours with the puppies. We're constantly looking at them. Almost always somebody is around nearby with them throughout the day. And that's so that we understand each of their behavior. So if this puppy here, if for instance, is deciding that I'm not feeling well and I'm going to act differently, we need to be familiar with what this puppy acts like normally. So we have to make sure we know all of our puppies, what their general behavior is, and watch for signs. When you have your dog, that's the same thing. You need to know your dog really well and understand when something is different. And you understand when it's something that's very minor and you know maybe is just uh, perhaps they got a bee sting or maybe they just banged into something and when it's something more serious and does require time to go to the vet. Same thing for when we put the puppies on a solid food. It's not because they're X number of days old, it's because we watched them. They were telling us, hey, we're hungry still, we want more food, and we watched Kelly and could see mm, the milk bar is empty, the puppies are still wanting to nurse, we need to help and supplement them. And with the desensitization, same thing. We watch all the puppies. If we bring in four people at the same time who are all talking, and the puppies are backing up, I don't care if it's all of them or just one, then we back that off and we start with one person talking, and we move to two, and we move to three, we find the threshold. Those are all the things that all come back to knowing your dog, observing your dog, and being familiar with what is and isn't normal behavior for your dog. So there we go, that's all of our learning for today. Now let's do the fun part. We're going to go through all of the puppies individually. We're going to tell you what their weight gain is, tell you a bit about them. You can see they're all licking my feet right now. And uh, the reason why they were all licking my feet just a second ago is because I have had my feet over where the dog food is. And when we see some of the puppies now, we are going to see some messy puppies and I'll probably end up with some of the food on me. We do have to change our clothes quite a bit around here. So our first puppy, we're going to do the mom birth order, is yellow collar here. Yellow collar seems to be just about passed right out from sleep. Oh my goodness me, just dead to the world. Hello buddy, hi. Hi, it's me. They all have their ears open now. They all uh, know who we are. They're used to us. We don't need to give them quite so much warning when we pick them up. We just give them a little gentle like, hey. Uh, they all lift their heads up when we come in. It's great. So yellow collar is this pretty chocolate phantom, just like his mama Callie. Sweet little boy, right in the middle of the pack so far. Got that little bit of white on his chest there. Oh my goodness, it'll be your turn in a minute there, Tam. And yellow collar is now 1.38 kilograms. All the puppies are over a kilogram now. It's uh, quite amazing how big they are. And uh, blue collar will be our smallest puppy, dark blue. And our biggest puppy will be pink collar girl. So pink collar girl is next. She is our only party. Reynolds just going to hand her over to me and she's quite filthy. She has food on her all over the place and that's because she is the biggest eater in the group which of course makes sense and that's why she weighs the most because she eats the most. This little girl is a gorgeous chocolate party and she is what we call a hidden phantom. Uh, she is also a phantom but you can't see the phantom markings because she's a party. You can just see them a little bit above her eyebrows where she has some phantom markings and she has her pretty little beauty spot there. Such a beautiful girl. And pink collar girl is 1.82 kilograms. So I expect by the time we do next week's update, she'll be up to two. She is one solid girl. And you can see there's quite a bit of width here. This is our little wide load. Yes, there we go, good girl. Next we have dark blue collar. And dark blue collar is a puppy who's upside down here. Hey buddy, hey sweetie, I'm so sorry to disturb your sleep here. Can you come and say hi to everybody? Oh my goodness me, there we go. Oh my goodness, there's so much talking going on over here. Tan collar girl wants to be the star of the show. Hi sweetheart, this little guy, now he is also a chocolate phantom and you can really see his tan points quite clearly and he's a try. And you get that because he has all of these white markings here. 
here, why don't you come sit on my lap if you're so sad? There, you want to be part of the show? You can sit on my lap and be in with everyone. Yeah, there you go. There. So now there's another way. You just watch the behavior. So why is she complaining? I know she's not hungry. She just ate. So what's going on? Well, she just wants to be having attention and get all cuddled up. And here you can see pink color is very forward. So she's already here trying to climb on me. We are going to be introducing toys to the puppies now. These puppies, even though they're just three weeks old, are really quite advanced and they are ready to have some toys. They're already interacting with each other. Now, Mr. Blue here, he is 1.30 kilograms and he is the tiniest puppy. Now, I don't know if he'll stay that way. Part of the reason for that is because he's one of the puppies who had a little bit of the coccidia. So he had some diarrhea. He didn't feel like eating for a day. Uh, so he probably hasn't gained quite as much in this past week as he would otherwise. There you go, handsome, handsome. There you go. Next, we have green collar. Green collar, where are you? Oh, there you are. Green collar, hello, calling green collar. I'm here. Hi. <laughs> green collar is one of my favorite patterns, which is this gorgeous <laughs> ebony phantom. And just look at his beautiful, beautiful markings. His phantom points are very copper. Okay, now see what the puppy's doing here? What is he telling me? He said, I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm uncomfortable with that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to spend a little bit of extra time with him and we're going to touch him all over. You can see how his legs are not soft. He's not comfy. There. He's being a little bit of a fussy pot. We don't want him to be a fussy pot. We want him to be comfy. There we go. And then we'll start at the middle of his head and just stroke him really gently until he decides, oh, actually, that's not bad having somebody pet me. Okay. Oh, I'm still a little bit worried about that ear. So when we have that, then we want to look at this ear and see how he flinched. We want to look at that ear and see if we can see anything. We smell it. Make sure there's no infection. Feel it for heat. Nope, everything's fine. There you go. Okay, there. This one seems to not be any problem at all. So that's something we're just going to note. And then later on today, we'll pick him up again. And we'll just touch that ear again and see what it is that might be causing him that concern. Because it does seem to be causing him a little bit of concern. He's not crying or anything like it's actually hurting him. He's just being a bit of a budget about it, aren't you? A bit of a fussy. And Mr. Green is 1.41 kilograms. So right in the middle of everybody, a really nice weight. He's a good boy, Mr. Green. Yeah, what about that? There we go. See now already. It was just a behavioral thing. There's no response to it now. So that's all you need to do is just really little gentle things. Make sure the puppy is enjoying the experience. And then, yeah, hi. And then they get everything all fixed up. But we will make note of that. And that is something that we'll continue to work on with them just to be sure that it's not something that reoccurs. There we go. Oh my goodness, Tan, it's your turn with all your fussing over there. Yeah, it's your turn. Yeah, come on. That's a good girl. Oh my goodness, she's a loud girl, isn't she? Oh yeah, do you want to show everybody how beautiful you are? Okay, my name's Tan Collar Girl. I'm an Australian Labradoodle and I'm just the cutest puppy in the world. My mommy says that I'm the favorite because I'm all black and that's what she loves the best. She loves my black shiny coat. She also tells everybody how I have a really beautiful short muzzle, a really strong stop, which is where my nose joins my head here, and my ears are really nice and high, which is all apparently what the Australian Labradoodle breed standard says. So clearly, I'm the best one in the litter, mommy says. This little girl is quite a little character as you can see. No hesitation in talking to you, telling you what she wants, and she loves to be held. She would go all day like this if you let her. And Miss Tancaller is 1.44 kilograms. So an excellent weight, really doing very nicely. Nice, solid puppy. And she's eating quite well. And we'll see now if she decides that she can manage on her own without squawking at me. Next, we have Purple Collar. And Purple Collar is sleeping over here. I'm just going to pull him to me. There we go. I'm your puppy derpy. Pee pads are handy for moving puppies around sometimes. 
Mr. Purple Collar is 1.72 kilograms. He has been our biggest puppy in this litter all along, but he got eclipsed by Pink Collar Girl. Oh, yes, you did. You're not quite as big. Very close in weight, though. This puppy is a handsome chocolate phantom, just the same as Mom. Oh, and there's your sister, Tan. We'll just pick Tan up and say, here you go. You look at the camera and tell everybody that you're the superstar. Nobody else gets attention. There we go. Mr. Purple is just a sweet guy, very quiet. He's a real gentle giant type of guy. He, want to look at the camera? That's a good boy. Doing really nicely. Again, very good weight gain. There you go, buddy. I'll put you down over there. And last but not least is Light Blue Collar. And Light Blue Collar, come here, handsome, is another one of these beautiful ebonies and he's a pretend phantom i'm not sure if your sister's going to let me put her down for a minute you've got some icky stuff on your paw there we'll just get rid of that and make you a little bit more comfortable here see if your sissy will be quiet so not a pretend phantom he's what we actually call a weak phantom but that sounds so terrible because there's nothing weak about this boy so he has a very similar shaped head to his sister tan collar there gorgeous short muzzle beautiful strong stop lovely high ear set but you can see his little phantom markings are almost invisible you don't notice them um, like you do on the other puppies but they are there so he's just a weak or leaked phantom so this is what his papa tig is tig is also a leaked phantom so my guess is uh, he's going to be similar to tig and only have three out of the four necessary alleles for phantom to be present uh, but you still see them because the ones that are there are strong enough to show up i don't and that uh, light blue is 1.56 and that's all the puppies. We hope you enjoyed today's uh, video. If you have any questions, anything about coccidia or anything about socialization, uh, anything about nutrition, anything at all about uh, Labradoodles, please feel free to post them in the comments below. And we hope all of you have gone and checked out our brand new puppies page on the website, which is vanisledoodles.com. And it's the page that says, find your puppy. We've uh, redesigned the page and made it so you can search by a date range when you would like your puppy to be born. And don't forget, it's two months after they're born before you take them home, uh, by the color of puppy that you're looking for, the size, and also you can search by the mom or the dad. If you have a mom that you're particularly fond of, you can search and see if she has a litter coming up. So we have most of our litters posted up through for the next six or seven months. Uh, we have one more mini litter that is not on the website yet that's coming up soon should be up next week so check out that uh, find your puppies page and uh, be sure to post in the comments here or email me at claire at van uh, let me know if you have any criticisms about the page if something didn't work if you didn't like it or if you like it we always love to hear that too so thanks so much for watching we hope we see you all again next week Finally, stop with your racket. Oh.